So if you have built yourself a new PC with uh, one of the high-end CPUs, in this case I'm using AMD, you probably want the best possible performance out from your build that's uh, not so hard to understand. That performance comes with a cost, and that cost is noise and it's uh, heat from your CPU. If these CPUs are going to top the charts in benchmarks, AMD have to push power to the CPU so they get on the top in the benchmark charts. To get kind of that 5-10%, uh, it will actually uh, require quite a lot of power and uh, yeah, that's what we see with these high-end CPUs. But what if I told you if you could uh, actually downclock the CPU a little bit but still sort of have almost, all, not the same performance but uh, I think good enough performance so that you are happy with it but you are also getting a cooler CPU, much less noise and just a more pleasant computing experience. And I think we are going to take a look at that today and just have some fun and see what we can do. So first of all, I have built my system from scratch here. I haven't really optimized it uh, other than uh, turning on uh, memory timings, Expo One and the default settings in the BIOS. And I have Ableton Live running here. So this is just an Ableton Live project I made to compare what's happening in this particular PC. It's not something I have online or anything like that. So I'm using just Serum here. I just have uh, 16 unison on both oscillators, so that's pretty CPU heavy. And I'm using uh, Diva here, where, I'm ha where I have the accuracy to di divine. And I have voices to 16 and stacks to six. And it's just a, a continuous note going here, just uh, uh, two of them and if I play this and tur just turn off the sound for now you can see that the temperature goes up here in uh, hardware info you can see that it's 92 degrees 93 degrees uh, it's going into red and at the same time I can hear that the CPU fan in my uh, PC on top here starts uh, spinning up I have set the CPU fan profile to silent in the uh, BIOS and the spin up time to slow. But you can hear that it starts uh, trying to cool the PC, obviously. So if I turn on the sound here, you can hear how sort of how it sounds. So I got it to 105 tracks here. And if I uh, added more tracks than 105, I heard some crackle in the sound. And when I hear crackle, that's sort of my cue to know that, okay, the system is overloaded. So if you just keep this running for a while, we can see that the uh, CPU temp temperature goes actually uh, around 96 degrees, 95, 96 degrees. And the fan is going uh, on the PC. And you can also see here in uh, the Windows Task Manager that all of the CPU cores on the uh, CPU is more or less in the roof here. If I added more tracks, it would be sort of topping out, but you would have a lot of crackle in the sound. So that's, as I said earlier, that's sort of my cue for knowing when it's overloaded. So when I stop, if I stop this, we can see that the temperature quickly goes down and the fan noise also quickly goes down. So what I'm going to do now is that I am going to go into the BIOS, I'm going to do some settings and uh, restart the PC and we are going to see what the temperatures are going to, to be and uh, how many tracks we lose in performance when we try to make the CPU a little bit more efficient. So let's do this and see what uh, happens. Okay, so we are in the BIOS now and this will obviously look different depending on what type of uh, motherboard you have. This is an ASUS motherboard and usually you have to sort of press F7 to get into advanced mode. So I'm doing that here. In this BIOS you have a few, I don't know, tabs on the top. Uh, in this case, on AI Overclock Tuner, I have it to Expo 1 on the memory. And then I just go down to something called uh, Precision 
boost overdrive. So we go in here to persistent boost overdrive and uh, everything here on the top is set to auto. But we are going to find something that is called thermal throttle limit. And here you actually want to decide the max temperature you are going to allow your CPU to, to, to be. This will sort of control how much performance you will get from your PC. So let's say if you have a really small case, a really uh, a small form factor build, and you have this beefy sort of CPU in that one, you might want to go into here and let's say 70 degrees, just that's the max temperature you can have in this case. Now, on my uh, case, it's a uh, mid-tower case, it's a little bit bigger, and I could perhaps set 80 or something here, but uh, just for, for the sake of this video, I want to set it to 65 degrees, so the temperature to 65. You could actually just be fine with this, restart your PC, and uh, yeah, see how, how much performance you get, and if you're happy with that, then that's... But another thing you have in some of these BIOS is something called Curve Optimizer, and this will let you sort of reduce the power uh, being sent to the CPU. And this is something that will show you if you have uh, got a good CPU or not, because uh, you can't just reduce the power on all of these 7950X and think that will work on each and every CPU. Every CPU have a different type of quality, they, all of the CPUs will reach the targeted uh, performance, but uh, it might be uh, at the different sort of power levels. So what I do here is that I go into Curve Optimizer and I select all cores just to make this easy. And on some videos, and we also have to select negative or positive here. So we, we want to select negative because we want to reduce, we want to try to keep the same performance, but we want to reduce the power used. So the number here often is said that anything from 30 to like 20 or 10 is something that should work. If it works with 30, so minus 30, I don't know if it's millivolts or minus 20 millivolts. This is something you just have to experiment with. And I, I did that when, with my PC, I started with 30, didn't work at all. I went down to 20, didn't work at all. 15, didn't work. 10, that worked. And I went up to 12. So that's my number for, for this uh, CPU. And you can also actually do this per core if you, if you want. So you can go per core because different cores can take different sort of uh, power settings, but this takes a lot of time and there are actually tools uh, Ryzen Master can sort of do this I think uh, automatically for you. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think so. Curve optimizer, all cores 12 for my sake and I set the thermal throttle limit to 65. So that's a pretty chill uh, CPU and uh, Yeah, let's just go and see uh, what happens with the uh, project when we have made these settings. Okay, so now the system is started up. I have uh, undervolted the CPU, uh, set the temperature to max 65 degrees, and uh, Ableton Live is started here and hardware info. I have not done anything with the Ableton project. We have still have 105 tracks when I had uh, the CPU running at full speed or no power savings. So let's just turn on my speaker share, just play, see what happens. Okay, we can hear that it struggles, right? Because we have less performance. You can sort of hear the crackle here. And you can see that the max temperature is 65 degrees in hardware info on the CPU. And the power draw, I think it's around, is it uh, 120 watt CPU? I'm not sure, package power 106 watts. So we stop it. Okay, so what we do now is we just remove some tracks. So let's just remove to, let's say 96. So from 105 to 96, see what happens. Mm. 
much better. But um, a little crackle there, just a tiny amount. So I want to just remove a few more tracks because I want to sort of have the same sound when I had it uh, running at full speed. So 93 tracks. Uh, still a little crackle on 93 tracks, so just go to 90 tracks then. Remove like that. So these are just unrealistic. This is just to test, just to compare the different settings on this PC. Um. 90 tracks. I can't say I hear any much crackle here now. Turn down the volume a little bit. When it starts the new loop, then, then it's fine with some crackle. Okay, so we turn off the sound from the uh, speakers here, and this room is sound treated, and there's almost no fan noise from the fan. And we can see that on some cores it's, it goes to uh, like 4.7 gigahertz, almost 4.8. It sort of sits around like 4.7, 4.6, 4.7. And if I uh, up the temperature to 70 degrees instead of 65, it actually went up to like 4.9, almost reached actually five gigahertz, but with a lot of more uh, silent running, uh, less power draw, Okay, actually now I uh, run this for a while and we can hear that it actually struggles. So I think we have to remove some more tracks here. So let's remove to 85. Let's try now. Yeah, it's still a, a little, little bad actually. Okay, let's remove it to 80 tracks. Still a little crackle, let's remove it to 75. Okay, that's that's better. Okay, so so it's it's a little less performance. course but if we look at look at this so 75 works just fine 75 tracks compared to uh, 105 tracks so you see here you can do the decision yourself actually. So if you think that the performance with uh, 75 degrees is enough for you for this CPU for your content creation or music production or something like that or if you have this uh, high power CPU but you have it in a uh, small uh, form factor build you can set it to 65 degrees and if you are lucky you can perhaps uh, you perhaps get a CPU that can accept more of these Curve optimizer um, down clock, if you will. Uh, some of the CPUs can accept, for example, 20, and then you probably will get some more efficiency as well. In my case, I think I'm going to set it to, to 70 degrees because for my case, it's just that I want the noise down. And of course, that's also will depend on your cooling. In this PC, I have the Noctua NHD15, the um, old version. So if I set it to 70 degrees, I still didn't have that much fan noise because I don't I don't like noise, I'm getting older and uh, I don't like loud noises. It's pretty fun actually because I, <laughs> when I was young, we, uh, we used to overclock our computers because uh, we wanted more performance 
But nowadays we want more efficiency and we want less noise. But hey, this is uh, one way of doing it and I think it works just fine. And I think the performance is still quite good actually when you, you, when you do this. So I did this using the BIOS. I recommend you have uh, the newest BIOS for your motherboard before you do this. But there's also a tool uh, called Ryzen Master, which will uh, enable you to do some of these things in uh, directly in Windows. It's free on AMD's website, so you can just go and uh, download the Ryzen Master, install it, and uh, I can show you some settings you can you do there as well if you don't if you don't like going into the BIOS and uh, doing settings there. So you just have to agree to everything, install Ryzen Master. Let's take a look when it's uh, done installing. So you start Ryzen Master and you can do this in um, easy mode or advanced mode. Uh, it's up to you. But another thing you can do here is that you can go to uh, control mode under overclocking here. You set it to manual and you can set your clock speed uh, manually. So for the 7950X, for example, you can set it to, you can set it to like 4.8 gigahertz or 4.9 and then you on temperature you can uh, you can just go down on temperature go down to like try 1.1 see if that works uh, run some Cinebench or run some uh, testing software press apply and test if it works just back off the temperature a little bit uh, apply and test and just go down until your system begins uh, failing and be uh, being unstable and then you just increase the temperature a little bit again and now you have sort of found your stable clock speed a clock your system can run at having a stable clock speed also will make your system uh, i think perform a little bit better in terms of latency because the cpu doesn't have to change the cpu speed all the time so this is also one uh, way of uh, trying to get some more performance out from your uh, AMD chip at least. So setting a, a set clock speed and uh, a uh, voltage and going for that is also one of the options you can uh, you can do if you don't want to go uh, into the BIOS. But uh, at least I hope this video gave you some uh, insights in how you can uh, yeah optimize your PC a little bit, uh, take off a little performance, but you get so much better cooling and so much less noise. And especially if you are like me, I, I probably want to build a sort of a uh, small form factor PC at one point. And uh, yeah, obviously you have to do something like this if you want to have some high-end uh, CPUs in there. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you in another video. Goodbye.